Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, it's been a while since I commented on Nerdy Geezer's video, uh, his top five console video, saying I was gonna do my own, and finally I'm going to do mine. Now, for me it was very difficult, because, because like because I've only just started to play some of these consoles, it was very hard for me to kind of zone in on five that, especially when like there are consoles I haven't bought yet, but I want to play like the PSP and the Dreamcast, excuse me, for example. So I'm going to go through them, through the ones I've chosen. Now, I will disclose that these aren't going to be in any particular order apart from the first, my last one. But every other one is not a particular order. You know, I'm not, they're not going to be, you know, this is not, I'm deciding not to do it in an order apart from the first one, just because, you know, it doesn't really matter. You know, everyone has their own opinion, etc. So it's going to be in no particular order. So to pick the first one, I think um, I would have to probably choose the PS4. Now, obviously the PS4 bat battle with the Xbox One completely was one-sided you know the ps4 dominated against the xbox one uh the amount of like praise and stuff the ps4 got like even like picking up the ps4 in on the 20th of december 2019 which is what i did um obviously after you know six years of being out it's like it was still so exciting you know and being able to go also for the for never having to look at the games anymore going Oh, you know, I'd, I'll pick up some, you know, pick up some cheap ones, blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, you know, it was amazing. And the first game I ever played on the PS4 was Shadow Warrior. And that's probably wasn't like a game that really showcased the PS4, uh, the PS4's potential and stuff like that. But the games that I've played since then definitely do. And the games that I will play, like Fallen Order when I get around to playing it and stuff like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and Ghost of Tsushima will also be ones that are really showcase uh, the PS4 and stuff like Sekiro and stuff like that. Um, and I think it's just in general, just how well it performs uh, and just how the games feel. It feels so like completely diverse, like playing Spider-Man and all these other games was has been such a joy to just play them and just go, oh my god, the graphics and everything about it, how smooth it is. It's just so amazing. And it just makes you feel like, you know, gaming can't get any better. Um, but obviously now with, you know, the Xbox Series X and the PS5, you know, it really kind of depicts what it's going to be for the future of gaming. Uh, moving on to the next one. Um, again, like I said, it was quite a difficult one to pick. In some ways, but I have to choose the original Xbox. Uh, the original Xbox was so amazing. Uh, playing Halo, uh, Halo 2, and just playing some of the other interesting games. Even games like Armed and Dangerous, uh, which I know isn't exclusive to the Xbox, he says. Not 100% sure knowing or remembering. Um, you know, just seeing what the Xbox can do. Uh, again, it's just like the comparisons to certain things like the PS2 and whatnot. It's so amazing. Uh, you know, it creates such a buzz. And again, the media on there and just everything that went into the Xbox is just so fundamental to gaming today. And just again, it was like the amount of times I've been back and played Halo and Halo 2 and, you know, all these other games and playing stuff like Stubbs the Zombie uh as well as you know so many other great games it's just one of those systems that you say to yourself you know if you had to really go back and think you know for to say thank you for the xbox for having halo and stuff like that just it's so amazing and it's so worth it uh and i'm just you know i'm like with most of my consoles if not all pretty much all my consoles rather i'm just proud to say, you know, I've played them and stuff like that. And I'm really hoping, hoping it'll be the case for the PSP and the Dreamcast when I buy them. Uh, so moving on to the next one, uh, I've got to, I've got to give it to the PS2. Uh, for me, you know, I've told the story about the PS2 and how I got mine originally. And I think it's safe to say that the PS2 for me is, uh, 
you know, starting off with it, uh, my start off obviously being uh, SmackDown, Shut Your Mouth, and Vice City, and then like moving on to playing other games. And it's like, yes, again, you know, I missed out on playing some of the bigger games like Devil May Cry, God of War, uh, the other Metal Gear Solid games, and stuff like that. You know, the stuff that I did. Oh, excuse me, camera. Uh, the playing on it like I never played like in this library I mean the, this library with being so big as it is you know I never really kind of explored the biggest of it you know one of the biggest libraries there are you know it's it's, it's you know the PS2 is the top one for so many people because it is just has so much on it you know games from every genre you know games that are exclusive to it that make it so amazing and you know, the PS2 is just, for me, it's just one of those things that I remember it so well. Like, then the covers, I loved the artwork on the covers of the games, and I love how appealing it was. And uh, I remember one of my fondest memories is I remember, like, me and my, my brothers, we used to have, like, uh, these, like, late nights where we'd all sleep in the lounge and we'd play games and stuff like that. And I remember waking up and... Uh, I remember we played, we had the Hulk game, the original Hulk one, the Eric Banner one. And I remember I played it, and I remember I played it f literally from the start all the way to the uh, mission where you end up fighting Ravage. Uh, so it's like I got like all the way nearly to the end of the game already. And it was just playing it. I just loved how it played, and I loved the art. Say, the artwork on the games were great. And. And just looking at like all the games that I have now and how I how uh, just experiencing those games, it just reminds me just how much I wish I played them back then. But the fact that I can I'm playing them now and I'm blown away by them uh, is just another reason why I just love the console. Uh, so we've got two left. Uh, so the next one is the Xbox 360. Now with the Xbox 360, so many. Time I've owned three 360s. Uh, the first time I ever had one, I my I think the two games that I remember getting first were Lord of the Rings: Battle for Middle Earth 2 and 99 Nights. Uh, now 99 Nights was like a really good game for me because I enjoyed those kind of games where you have you know like troops, uh, like a big group of uh, troops that work for you, and like I remember getting up to the same bit and losing. But I think the last time I played it, I think I may have done that bit. But in general, it's not the most amazing game now. I look back at it. Um, and like Battle of Middle-Earth 2, obviously, I love it so much. And again, it's just like then getting it the second time around and playing all the COD games, uh, apart from World of War and Call of Duty 2. But like playing, obviously, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops, Black Ops 2, and all the others. It's like thinking oh my god you know i've passed these by the first time and then like batman arkham asylum and arkham city arkham origins even and and again it's the same thing i said about the ps2 you know playing the games that i missed out on like bioshock mass effect uh elder scrolls eventually going to play skyrim and stuff like that it's like actually finally playing these games that again people have gone on about and played the remastered versions and saying you know doing their comparisons and yet being able to experience it uh, is just so great and just the 360 in general and halo 3 obviously was like i played that so much like most people did multiplayer and just everything on it was just so amazing uh, i just can't talk about it enough uh the 360 in general it's just so great um i still love it so much and like the assassin's creed games as well like i played the assassin's first assassin's creed multiple times and then i started playing all the other ones and um now i've i'm be playing black flag which is considered one of the best ones obviously if not the best one and you know i'll be playing that soon uh but yeah it's just like everything about the 360 to me is just something that again it's one of those things that one of those consoles that i did have memories about and about the games and stuff like that because some of them like the ones that obviously like the n64 i didn't really have much of it because other than like pokemon stadium and that, i don't have memories of it because i didn't own one 
Um, and so with the 360, just owning it three times and obviously like broadening my horizons each time until we get to this point where, you know, we're here and I'm experiencing the, those these things now. And it's just like the origins of it. I just, everything about it just screams, you know, a must have console for everybody. You know, if you don't have a 360, like you pick one up. Like, why don't you have one? Uh, just pick it up. It's just amazing. Um, and then on to numero uno. Uh, there was just with a no question. It has to be the PlayStation 1. Uh, you know, it, it was a console for me that transcended my gaming to a whole new level. Uh, only playing the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo before that. Uh, and just all the times I used to go into the... Uh, all the times I used to go into the virtual games near um, where my nan lived uh, at the time and just literally be able to look at the artwork and the artwork for me just every game whether I liked the game or not the artwork was just superb uh, games like um, Rascal for example you know the purple background and the red and the green and it was just like oh one of the most memorable covers for me and um, the game is awful <laughs> and the you know it's pretty cheap to get hold of as well but I love it I absolutely love the artwork of the games you know, and, it, and it's so weird because you look at the artwork on games and you think it's so versatile. Like, you look at games like 40 Winks and you go, hmm, that's kind of interesting. And then like Medieval and, uh, you know, all these ones that have such things like Digimon World as well, which is so I'm so nostalgic for. It's just looking at all these games and just always seeing it. And just, again, looking at the games that I now have. And it's like, you think, oh, you know, because for me personally, if I could... If I had a game, my game room big enough, I would literally display my PS1 games so I could see the cover. So I, rather than just see these like the spines of it, I would just love to be able to see them all. And it would probably it would fill my heart with joy just being able to see them all, you know, across just all at, in the spectacle that they are, and just see the front, see the artwork, and just be like, wow, this is this is be like being back in the shop and just looking at these games, thinking I'm going to own you one day. You know, I'm going to sell a Super Nintendo just to get Beast Wars because it looks really cool, uh, you know. But yeah, the PS1 for me and just seeing like stuff like Tekken and the just the artworks alone, they're just for me. And the PS1 demos were so crucial to me, uh, just being able to get them. You know, I'm still going to get a full set of those. So I have to, you know, it's something for me that's probably the only thing in my entire collection that I'm going to get a full set of like i'm not looking for a complete collection of any of the systems that i'm gonna i have or going to have but the ps1 demos i have to have them all um i probably didn't play them all but i certainly played a great deal of them and the games of course um but yeah if i could literally display all of the ps1 games uh across then i would do that i want to make that a mission so that you know if i have a bigger game room that's exactly what's going to happen like I would just love to display them all. I would love. Uh, that's what I would love to do. I'd literally have to, like to have a game room where I display every single game on its face, so I could see the artwork and see and have them in like the chronological order as well to kind of go, oh, this is what the Mega Drive had to offer and all of this. And then you move on to the Super Nintendo and you see all the different pictures and you know that would be incredible. It would be amazing. Uh. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um. Thank you, Nerdy Geezer, for uh, doing the video. And um, yeah, I was really happy to do this. Uh, it's been a, it took a while for me to do it just because I was thinking of other ideas at the time. Um, but I really hope I gave a clear explanation as to why um, you know I like like the consoles that I do. Again, other than the PS One, the other ones were a completely different order. Um, you know, everyone's gonna have their own opinion, obviously, but like. Some of the consoles I haven't played enough yet, and obviously with a lot of stuff like the Dreamcast and the PSP, I mean those two consoles alone probably wouldn't have made the list anyway. But like, you know, it may have swayed me to something different, maybe. Um, even though the Mega Drive was like, and also even though the Mega Drive was my like first ever like true uh, console that I played on, like again I didn't play it enough to kind of really kind of get into it. Um, really I didn't with the PS2 but 
because even though the but the PS2 stuff I did play and the 360 stuff I did play uh, was just you know astronomical and was so worth it. So they had to make the list, uh, PS1 especially. Uh, anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe down below with notifications turned on for my latest videos. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching and subscribing. Enjoy the rest of your day, whatever it is you're doing. And as always, my friends, take care of yourselves.